another instance of I'm on everybody's side and no one's side all at the same time. Melody, the silence is is deafening. Silence is the answer, okay? Trisha is a liar and Stormy... What's good, y'all? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. We are here once again to talk Love and Marriage, Huntsville, Season 9, Episode 2, Thruple in Paradise. If you haven't already, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, thumbs up the video if you don't do anything else, and then leave your comments down below. Let's talk about this interesting show. And by show, I mean as a whole. Like, I don't know why this is still on TV, to be honest. Um... We're still at dinner, okay? We pick back up right where the last episode left off, where Stormy is asking Melody how she feels, um, or, yeah, how she feels about the fact that her millimeters go out and basically not only attack them on social media, but attack their businesses. And she wants to know if Melody agrees with that. Melody says she doesn't have anything to say. Now, I'll say this. Now, I have been a very big proponent on feeling as if just because Melody says something publicly to her fans, it doesn't mean that her fans are going to adhere to that. If y'all can hear that, it is pouring suddenly, so excuse the rain. But it's like I don't think that Melody saying anything is going to make a difference, right? That has always been my stance. I still have that stance. Whether or not Melody says anything to her fans, her fans are still going to do whatever the hell it is that they want. However, in this setting where Stormy is asking Melody point blank, do you agree with the way your fans are moving Melody should have answered, right? By her being silent about it, the silence is deafening. The silence is an answer. People always say, I have no response. That is a response, right? So Melody's response is, we signed up for a show, and we have to be prepared for this. Now, on, on one hand, let me bring my Libra scale back out again. Let me drag my scales out. On one hand, yes, that is true. You guys are on a show. You signed up for this. You have to take the good with the bad. But on the other hand, People do not sign up for a reality show for their businesses to be attacked in the name of another cast member, right? So in this moment, Melody should have said something. The fact that Melody did not answer is the answer. Melody doesn't care. She doesn't care what her fans are doing. She doesn't. She doesn't care. She may feel that this is her comeuppance. She may feel that, you know, whatever happens to them, they deserve. Because for so long, when Melody came on this show and people found out that Martell was cheating on her, you know, a lot of people threw it in her face and laughed at her. And it was Tisha's fans and Kimmy's fans and even Stormy's fans have talked about the fact that Melody is divorced and Martell was cheating on her. And we hear Destiny talking about the respectful cheating and all that type of stuff. So Melody might feel, you know, I don't care because so many people have been attacking me, right? So Melody said, look, I've experienced things on this show as well at the hands of y'all fans. She called Stormy fans the Stormishas. <laughs> Stormy was offended by that. But she said the Stormishas have been, you know, doing stuff to me. And all I do is I block them. I don't complain about it. So Melody doesn't want to say whether she agrees or not. She agrees. Stormy then said, y'all don't even know this, but I had to turn myself into jail because of a millimeter. Now, we all know the story by now. If you're watching the show, you know the story about the content creator that went up to Canvas Beauty's warehouse with her phone out to record, claiming that she was going to, um, she wanted to purchase something. We all know by now, my personal opinion is no. That lady did not go because I've seen her channel. I've seen her videos. I do not think that that lady went to that warehouse under the guise of, oh, I just want to purchase some things. 
I, I personally don't believe that. There was no reason to go to that warehouse when Canvas Beauty has a website. I believe Canvas Beauty is it still in Target, but there are other ways to, to buy this. And I know the story of people that were in my comments last season saying that, no, she went because older people don't know how to buy online. If you know how to upload a video to YouTube and start a YouTube channel, you know how to get online and purchase something, right? So Stormy is saying that the millimeter came up to the, the warehouse and Stormy came out and Stormy accidentally went online. But that Stormy accidentally went on, that she went accidentally went online and she cussed the lady out and she got charged with harassing communications. Stormy then asks, do you agree with that extent of harassing them, not only as people, but as business women? Melody doesn't say anything. Shanita said, well, of course she doesn't. That's like a dumb question. And while it might seem like a dumb question, Shanita, it's, it's, it's a question Melody should have responded to. She should have responded. So Kimmy then said, well, look, 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 look. Melody does need to be on record saying that she doesn't agree. And Stormy is like, well, I'm done talking about it. Um, in her confessional, Melody is saying that, look, if you got arrested, you did something to get arrested for, and absolutely not. No, ma'am. No, 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 no. We have seen people get falsely arrested before, and that was just so incredibly irresponsible of Melody to even say. People have been falsely arrested before. So for Melody to make that asinine as statement, wow, sis, wow, wow. So... Melody then goes on to say that Stormy shouldn't have allowed someone to get her out of character. She said it as a business person, all these uh, people that are, she said, claiming to be multimillionaires. You should know how to present yourself and how to hold yourself to a certain standard. Now, I do agree with that. On one hand, yes. Do I think that Stormy shouldn't have let that content creator knock her off her square to that extent? Absolutely. Absolutely. But at the same time, you cannot control how somebody reacts to something. You can't. Stormy said that she felt threatened. She didn't know what the lady was going to do. She reacted in a way that she saw fit. Melody said that she would have simply called 911 and not dealt with it. Everybody's different. Everybody is different. I don't have a problem, personally, with Stormy cussing the lady out. Shouldn't have ran your ass up there. I don't. I don't have an issue with it. But for Melody to say, if you got arrested, you did something to get arrested for, oh my God. So Melody then goes on to say that Stormy is delusional. And I said, mm. hey, pot, meat kettle. Come on, Mel. Come on, Melody. So after this gets sorted out, because like now nobody wants to talk. Tisha decides, you know what, let's, let's kick things up a notch. Let's kick things up a notch. So now Tisha is like, okay, well, Trish, Trish, what about you and Martel? So Trish then said that, okay, look, Martel reached out to her to work out. Stormy said, so is it true that you lied about going to Martel's house? Trish is like, yes, but I lied to protect what it could have been perceived as. I don't like to call people dumb, but Trisha is dumb. Trish is stupid. You know why? Because you lied to protect what people think it could have been. Instead of you coming out and saying, look, yeah, Martel slid in my DMs. He wanted me to train him. I got to his house. He wasn't really on that type of time. It was really on him trying to get in where he fit in. I wasn't with it, so I left. That's all Trish had to say. But for you to lie, it comes across the way, sis. You are a liar. You come across as a liar on the show. That's not good. That's not good. Why do you even want to be known? As a liar. That's what I don't understand. I truly don't get that about her. So Stormy then said that it was disheartening to hear you lie. Because like 
Trisha said it with some bass in her voice too. So then Trisha's like, yeah, I did say it a certain way. I was a little aggressive with it, but that's because I was, you know, irritated by the question. She said Martel didn't flirt with her or anything of the sort. And my thing is, so why not just say it in that moment? Why not just say it in that moment? This is crazy. So Melody said, you know what? A lot of stuff been said today. I have no feeling about any of it. <laughs> so she said it is what it is. Let's go out and let's just enjoy the remainder of the vacation. And everybody was looking at Melody like, you ain't got nothing to say back. So the next morning, we see Stormy and Trish say that they're leaving. They're excited. They're bouncing all over the place. Stormy said that Chess, her son, has his first T-ball game. She wants to be home for that. And that Trish is saying that she has something to do with her daughter. And she wants to be home for that. I think she's like a dance recital or something. She says she missed the first one. She doesn't want to miss this one. If y'all got something to do, y'all got something to do. Sounds a little cappish, a little cappington to me, but... If y'all got something to do, y'all got something to do. Um, so they leave. Melody, Kimmy, and Tisha are sitting out at the pool. And they tell her, this is relaxing. Like, the trip has been great. You've been planning, like, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back things. But being able to sit back in the pool and relax, like, this is perfect. Chef's kiss. Kimmy appreciates that even though they've had some tough conversations, um... They've ended it in resolve without the men being there, Kimmy. Wow. Cause you didn't think that y'all would be able to do that. Oh, wow. Whoa, Kimmy. Wow. We don't need the men to help us solve an argument. Look at that. Welcome to 2020 fucking four. I'm so disappointed in Kimmy for saying that last episode. So Melody said that it was a little uncomfortable for her that Destiny sat next to her at dinner and like pushed so much to sit next to her because now it's giving like, what's really good, sis, what are you on? I agree. I, I agree. Destiny, you did a lot. You made, it's not like they all came in to sit down and Destiny just sat down. You had somebody get up so you could sit next to Melody. Destiny wants to be Melody's friend again so bad, so bad. And I've seen people say, no, she doesn't. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. And if she does, that's okay. But actions have consequences. And Melody feels that a lot of the stuff that you have done in regards to her and in regards to her situation with Martel, she can't rock with. You got to eat that. You have to eat that. I see a lot of people saying that Melody doesn't want you to be friends with both. She wants you to pick sides. I, if she does, she does. If she does, she does. Either you pick a side or you don't fool with her. But she has made her stance very, very clear to you, Destiny. Melody has made her stance extremely overly clear on what she wants and expects out of a friendship. You did not do that you were not able to deliver that you don't seem willing to deliver that now quit trying to be your friend she's telling you she don't want to be cool with you like that be gone with it is there nobody else in Huntsville <laughs> well I, I promise I swear for love I do not know why y'all want to be this lady friend so bad is there nobody else in Huntsville to be friends with so Tisha, or, um, Tisha then said that Melody kind of shut down a little bit at dinner. Melody said, look, last night told me what I needed to know about people. It told me how the people that are delusional and all this other type of stuff. Melody believes that Stormy is delusional. I don't know why, per se. I'm not where the delusion is coming from from Stormy. But Melody thinks that Stormy is delusional and said that was confirmed for her last night. Now, I will say it is a little hypocritical of Stormy. This is why. Because Stormy can say that, yeah, I told my mom to chill, but you still brought your mother, who you knew was a ringleader on Facebook for attacking Melody. You still brought her not only on the show to exasperate her disdain for Melody, but you took her to certain events that would 
put her in front of Melody where she could tell her to her face how much she dislikes her and all this other stuff. So it's, which is why I said I'm on nobody's side and everybody's side. Because if, if Melody feels she doesn't care what happened with you and this content creator, meanwhile, you basically kind of did the same thing with your mother to her, maybe that's where the delusion is coming from. I don't know, but I just kind of feel like Stormy is a little hypocritical when you basically did the same thing with your mother. Yeah, we heard you tell your mother to chill maybe once or twice, but you also did ask very probing questions to your mother. Very probing questions. When your mother didn't show up to go to jail with you, when you went to turn yourself in, you sat there and you basically kept asking your mother, so who are you talking about? You talking about Melody? Like, Stormy, you have done things as well to get your mother to talk about her disdain for Melody, not only just in general, but on this very same show. So, Tisha is like, um, no, so then Melody said, yeah, Tisha said that Melody shut down, and Melody was like, yeah, I shut down because I didn't want to say something, so I just let her have it. She then said, I think I, you know, did right by everybody, planned a nice trip, and Stormy and, and Trish both left without saying goodbye, and that's rude, which I think is rude, too. Y'all could have at least said, Mel, we leaving, bye. I mean, at the very least. So... Tisha then said, well, I hope the conversation wasn't too uncomfortable at dinner about Trish and Martell's DMs. Why did you bring it up? I just, whatever, Tisha. So Kimmy is like, well, I knew that it wouldn't go the way that it would have. It should have been in a smaller group. And I told you that, Tisha. Kimmy be so quick to throw Tisha under the bus. <laughs> so she's like, but I told you that. So Kimmy said, look. The story that she's telling is not the story that I heard. Kimmy heard that Martell and Trish were flirting. Melody said, look, Trisha is a liar and is. She said because she lies about everything. Everything that she talks about is a lie. She said because even when we asked her was she married, she lied and said she wasn't and said she was. And I said this too when Trisha first came on the show. That weird ass lady talks in circles. She talks in circles about everything because if somebody asks her, are you married? She was saying no. Well, I mean, kind of, it's, it's complicated. It's not either you're married or you're not. All she had to ever say was I am married, but I'm estranged from my husband. I'm separated. We've been separated X amount of years. I have been dating Ken in the interim. That's literally all she has to say. That's not complicated to say. It's not. It's not. Trisha is weird. The fact that you lie about that, something that's very simple to explain, then you lied about the Martell situation. Girl, you are a liar. And you weird because you talk in circles. So Melody then said, look, the people that do kind of stuff like that, that lie, she don't want certain people in her space. And so the people that left needed to leave. And that's perfect for her. There we have it. So they go on a catamaran ride, and while they're on the ride, Melody is talking, and she said, look, I think I went out of my way to make sure that everyone was comfortable on this trip. She was like, Stormy and Trish left, and they didn't even say a thank you or goodbye or anything. And she said, look, I can see Stormy kind of feeling away, but if Trish was doing that just based off the fact that that's supposed to be your homegirl, if y'all felt so disrespected and y'all were so upset and y'all didn't want to be around me any longer, y'all shouldn't have come back to the house that night. Y'all should have went and stayed somewhere else. And I, I agree. I agree. You that upset with me to the point that you can't even say goodbye, but you had no problem staying in my house. And yes, I know. Before somebody says production more than likely paid for the house, production paid for all of this stuff. But if we are looking at it without breaking the fourth wall, this is Melody's trip. We know how this works, people. Okay? Before somebody comes in the comments. So, Shanita said that she believes that Trish slept with Martell. And that's when Melody, once again, is like, well, she's a liar. So, who knows? Who really knows? 
I kind of feel like it's childish or on Trisha's behalf because Melody didn't do anything to you. Even when you were sitting there talking about your conversation about the DMs between you and Martel, Melody didn't do anything to you. So for you to have a problem and not even say bye, Trish is just lame to me. I do not like that lady. <laughs> so uh, meanwhile, we see Kimmy, Destiny, and Tisha are talking, and they're saying how Trish might have felt blindsided because she didn't know that – any of this was going to happen, whatever the case. So Tisha's like, she had a hard first season. She made it hard for herself. She made it hard for herself. Nobody has made this season hard for Trisha, but her. <coughs> so back up, everybody goes back upstairs. They're all in the group again. Nell, for whatever, for whatever reason, Nell turns to Destiny and asks if she, no, not even at this point. Nell asked Destiny if she talked to Lucky. Lucky is apparently her son Lance's nickname. Um, I guess they have some chemistry. Nell said that Lance is not ready for a serious relationship because he just got out of a marriage. She don't want uh, Lance with Destiny. That's what that is. So then Nell, out of the blue, for whatever the reason, turns and asks Sonny, do you have kids? And this pissed me off because Nell... Nell, Lanell, you literally were on that sprinter and you heard her talk about IVF. Why are you asking this lady about children? So Sonny is like, no, but as I told you guys, I'm going through IVF. So now Destiny's uncomfortable and Destiny's over here making faces, saying how it doesn't feel good that her friends are asking uh, the woman that betrayed her, if she has ki asking about kids with her ex. And I'm like, Destiny, these ladies are not your friends. I'm going to tell you why Tisha's not your friend, because Tisha is constantly taking a situation that you are very sensitive about and causing people to talk about it. Tisha is basically a person, male, who you want to be friends with and making you have these hard conversations in front of everybody and giving everybody a, a front row seat to this. Tisha's not your friend. Kimmy's not your friend because Kimmy's been yucking it up with um, Moses and Sonny going to dinner and everything. These people are not your friend, Destiny. Melody then asks everybody to give a word about the trip, how they felt about it. Melody's word was freeing. Nell said exhausting. Why? Ne okay, Nell. Uh, Shanita said grateful, Sunny said clarity, Kimmy said revealing, said revealing is not bad or good, can be indifferent, Destiny said a lot, that's two words, Lauren then echoes it and says a lot, we ain't heard Lauren talk <laughs> the past three episodes, um, and then Tisha said growthful. Apparently, they looked it up, but in Melody's confessional, she would say, ain't nobody ever heard Tisha used to grow the word growthful. I'm glad it's a word, because, like, nobody knew it was a word. I definitely was like, is that a word? So they put it on the screen. Then she was like, because we know Miss Wanda ain't using growthful. Now, I mean, Miss Wanda, get in your ass, Melody. Don't say nothing, because you done came for this lady. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Miss Wanda is not using a word. You know what? Miss Wanda might use growthful and just not realize what it means. But, you know, again, Miss Wanda getting your ass. You can't say nothing because you done came for this lady. Okay. So they then, um, they're going to put their word into a bottle, that bottle that they got from the invitation. And I guess they're going to throw it into the sea. I guess that's what they're going to do. We then pan over and see the guys. Uh, they're going to do some archery. They said if the girls are out on a trip, why can't we do the same and have some fun? So Martel X Moses put him to the side with Chris and it's like, yo, are you still interested in the house? What's good with that? Moses said maybe for an investment a little smaller than what we want. We're looking for a house of a certain size so that when we are in town, you know, we're comfortable. So this is more of an investment. He said the rooms are a good. Some of the rooms are smaller than he wants. The master is a good size, but the other rooms, not so much. Martel said, look, I can build you a house. I can build you a better house, a bigger house. That's nothing. Oh, okay. Okay. 
So Martell brings up Destiny and asks if, you know, they're still in love. He said Destiny was kind of talking about how y'all are still in communication or still in contact trying to communicate, work things out. Moses said, yeah, she still, she still love me. I think she does. Um, he then said that he has love for her. Moses said the only thing that he is guilty about is for not reaching out and letting her know what was going on. Said he apologized for that, took accountability for that. He then goes on to say that he had not seen Destiny for eight to nine months. You were texting her though. You forgot that part. You might not have seen her, but you were texting her. Martell then says, well, it looked like we not going to know who the side chick is. You know, Moses said, now my wife is my wife. We know who the side chick will be. Do y'all know how I will fall out if Messity, if Messity, if Destiny start messing with Moses again? Girl, please have some, have some respect for yourself and don't. Do not. So Martel said that in his confessional, he values his friendship with Destiny, and if she tells him don't sell the house, then he won't. Yes, you will, Marcel, because you need the money. Stop it. Yes, you will. So the guys get all back together in one group, and Maurice is saying that he heard the girls' trip was a lot of chaos. You know, they're fussing about the rooms and all the other stuff. And Moses is saying, my girl was cool. Sonny liked her room. <laughs> so... They're like, how are both, how, how do you have both your girls there? The fact that they're saying both of your girls and Moses is still yucking it up instead of just saying only my wife, only Sonny is my girl and Moses is playing into this whole both of my girls were there is crazy, right? So, <laughs> so Moses is like, well, Melody invited Sonny and then Destiny just came a day later, and we know that is by way of Tisha being messy, right? So Moses then said, look, I don't like that, you know, everybody's kind of coming at my girl, and I don't want to call nobody out, but a lot of it is really from, like, yo girl talking to Kim. Kim said, well, I don't know her. <laughs> and I feel like Kim is such a deer in headlights. Kim is, Kim might be too precious for this show. He don't know what the hell is going on ever. So, Marceau then said, well, I heard that Trish trained Martel. And Martel was like, ain't no female ever trained me. Ain't no female ever trained me. Said that Trish never trained him. So, Marceau was like, well, look, maybe I got the wrong story. Because the little birdie told me that Martel slid in her DMs asking about getting trained. Now, you know, Martel gets caught in a lie 90% of the time. So Martel is sitting there looking stupid because that's what happened. So Martel is like, uh, why you care? Why are you asking about this? Martel then admits he did slide into the DMs, but it's not her business. So then Ken is like, well, this is what, this is what I heard. And Ken tries to recant the story by way of Trish. And Martel was like, no, 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 I'm not going to let nobody play with me like that. If I would have tried to get with her, I would have said I tried something with her. It didn't work. She turned me down. I would say that. But I didn't. Marcel, or excuse me, Martel then is like she wasn't as bad then as she is now. Basically saying she didn't look that good back then for me to try it with her. He's such an ass. He, then Martell is like, you know, I hit her up. She came over, you know, we watched some TV. She might have had some wine, but that was it. The story is not adding up to me. I I, I am more willing to, to side with Shanita. I think that they did mess around. I think that something did happen between the two of them, and we'll probably never find out the truth until Martell is on one of his benders when he goes out and just starts, you know, throwing out random information to us. So Ken then asked Marceau what he talked about with Marquez, who is Trisha's husband. And Marceau was like, I told him that he messed up. He left the family. He ran out, all this other type of stuff. That's what I told him. So Ken said that he's been in a situation with a married woman before. And I'm like, what? What? So all the guys are looking at him like. 
So Martell is like, you know, he likes being a side nigga, which clearly you do. And I kind of feel like, why? So Maurice says, look, when you have somebody that you really like, you let go of the past and you grabs onto the your future's hand. Why is she still married? Why is she still married? Let's be real about this. But we'll find out. So let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up the video. Oh, sorry about the light. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.